what, do you have a vision for what our relationship could be like in 10 years or 20 years or 50 years? Darlene, it looks like you're going to talk. Yes, actually, you know, when we think about the commonalities of just humans, um, obviously it's, it's, it's first, it's family, and um, community is important. And um, then it extends into your outer communities and then your, you know what I mean, your country and then your world. And um, we have issues in our communities that are the same within your families and within your communities. And I think, you know, a common issue that we, we really, really need to, to talk about and discuss, especially in the city of Sudbury, is our environment. Um, you know, we can't continue allowing these, um, these mining companies and, um, you know, all of the uh, technical companies that are just um, really abusing the land and not giving back or not, you know what I mean, helping clean it up. Um, our lakes are, are, are toxic. Our, um, you know, our, our soils have changed. Um, we're not um, even, even our, um, our, our animals and, you know, I'm sure we have a lot of hunters and gatherers are here. And um, what you've picked, you know, the berries you've picked this year are not the same as the ones that you've picked, you know, when you were a child. You know, we can't, we go into lakes now and pick our cranberries and, uh, you know what I mean, there's, there's this fear of, um, you know, arsenic, you know, and this is the pure reality of what we're living today. And so, you know, this is not, you know, what, this is not what Siberians are talking about daily and this is something that we have to because, you know, you're constantly hearing about lakes being shut down. Who shuts down a lake in the 21st century? You know what I mean? Why is this happening? And why is this allowed? And why is this just one snippet of our news? You know, that we're just, and then we allow this to happen. And then we just go and say, oh, well, you know, you know change. And I know there's a lot of people who, in Lively and in, in Sudbury, that are working hard in, on these, in, in these issues. But you would like to see the province and you would like to see the municipality take these issues seriously because so this you're is saying a common is, issue. Let's take that issue and use it to build our communities together and deal yeah. with that humongous yeah. issue. Yeah. I had the chance to meet with Stephen Harper. <laughs> what are your perceptions? Your perspective? Well, I'd, uh, I don't really speak very highly of Stephen Harper and uh, for many reasons. Um, I guess it seems to me that uh, the, the federal government is uh, a, a government that's designed to make money, okay? And they're not designed to uh, meet the people's needs. May they be uh, Canadian, Aboriginal, or uh, whatever. And, and they're, they're out there to make sure the economy grows, make sure that they look good, make sure there's a zero deficit by, deficit by 2016. And whatever the, it takes to make that come to pass, they will do it. And they will run people over. And they have run our education system, our, our First Nations government, our, our uh, social services, our, everything. Uh, they've just taken and stripped away and we're right down to the bare bones. We're just hanging on. Chief Miller, what about the reserve system itself? Do you think it's a good system? Do you think it's working for you and your people? No, it's not working for us at all. Uh, in fact, it, it sucks really. Um, it, we are nations, okay? And the government, uh, the state of Canada, does not recognize or the crown that we are a nation, okay? And we have to be involved in decision making of this land, period. And if we're not, there are going to be conflicts, misunderstandings, and all this stuff that is happening here today. Legislation that governments force down First Nations throat all the time without any consultation, and their definition of consultation is, here's a paper, I consulted with you, see you later, I'm going to take your resources, by now, and we're going to make our millions. That's you know, with I Don't No More, there was a bit of, you know, Harper did meet with First Nations leaders from across the country, but what I think a lot of Canadians discovered that there are so many First Nations leaders across this country that it is such a complicated process. I, I don't know if you have any thoughts on how that arrangement could, could possibly work in the future. Okay, well, we have uh, a lot of uh, PTOs, uh, different uh, organizations that we work with. We have North Shore Tribal Council, we have Union of Ontario Indians, we have the Chiefs of Ontario, we have the AFN. So these organizations... But they don't we, represent everybody either. Nope, you know, like there, are, there are bands that want to opt out. Exactly, but 
and they deserve to be at the table too, don't they? Yeah, but the communication is there, okay? And that's the important part, is the communication. When they know the communication, they can call the AFN and they can share your information, they call the government, you know what? Put you on hold here for a half an hour or a half a day and you don't get any answers and we'll get back to you and all you get a letter in the mail saying, sorry, we can't help you out. But the, the, the unity on First Nations right across this country has been shown and it, it'll, it'll come back, I guarantee you, if things don't change. And uh, uh, when the, the government of Canada, Stephen Harper, makes a commitment and says there, there will be space in Canada and we will meet the needs of First Nations people and nothing has happened in, in two years, uh, that is appalling. And he has the power to change. But what he's been doing is legislation in order to fit their agenda. And it's happening right before us. And it's not only affecting First Nations, it'll affect you know, mainstream society, Canadians also, sooner or later, I guarantee it. But that is where it's going to change, nation to nation. Treaties are there, they're legal documents, they haven't been negotiated, renegotiated, and that is what we're standing behind because um, we know our history, we know who we are, and all we want to do is have the Crown honour those commitments and those treaties that are still alive today. John, do you have hope for, for the future? Do you see a relationship developing from here on in? I, I think it, it can happen, but I'll go back to what I said before. It has to be collaboration, collaboration, collaboration. Chief just pointed out, it's a dialogue of the deaf. You phone a bureaucracy. It's, it's interesting, you know, that the bulk of the money is set aside for, to administer the Indian Act. Most of it goes to bureaucracy and ministerial staff and ministerial studies of, of First Nations problems. And very little of it, a fraction of it, comes down to the grassroots. And we've been over this ground before. Paul Martin, some of you may remember the Kelowna Accord, Kelowna, British Columbia, where all the premiers and territorial leaders and First Nation leaders got together in Kelowna and they reached an accord. And, and the first item on the accord was to make meaningful attack on the problems on the reserves and in First Nations communities. Of course, he got defeated. And that's disappeared. Now you can't even talk to the powers that be. So the first thing is to collaborate and to honor the treaties that we have in place. The Ring of Fire is a perfect example. And now we have the spectacle of Bob Ray representing the First Nations folks. And we got Ovid Mercury representing the companies. And the province is saying, We'll, we'll just wait and see what happens. Don't blame us if this all falls apart. Okay? So, if you go on somebody's territory to mine or you've discovered ores, you, you just can't go and stake a claim and start bringing in trucks and cutting trees and hauling stuff out of there. There are factors that need to be uh, resolved. One is resource revenue sharing. Two, potential for jobs and job training for the, for the First Nations folks living on those territories. And then, of course, a share in the profits. That seems to me. Um, I think there was a model up in Atawapisquat with respect to diamonds. But if you look at that agreement, the First Nations group up there got peanuts out of those diamonds. But yet, if you go to Burks in Toronto and see those diamonds, they're selling for thousands and thousands of dollars. Now they're going into the China market. God help us. And what did the people at the grassroots, what do they get out of it? So we have these issues that need, we need to collaborate on. and we sh and the idol no more tried. I mean, First Nations people tried to focus the dialogue through idol no more. 
and suddenly it went, it went uh, dormant. And so hopefully this, you know, this, this could be the beginning of starting the dialogue. But again, I really, really feel that First Nations people are totally helpless in this because the one major partner in this deal, in this treaty, doesn't want to talk. He doesn't want to talk. And we'll see what uh, James Anayah says at the end of the week. And what are we going to do about it? What are we collectively going to do about it?